Okay, everybody. So first thing I want to do is I want to draw out a more simplistic schematic of the celiac trunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it out without the organs that we drew in class. I'm going to draw it out. It's gonna, like I said, it's going to be a little more, at least I hope, a little more of a simplistic schematic. And hopefully it's a little easier to understand. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw out that celiac trunk is just this big red dot here. Okay. So that is going to be my celiac trunk. Remember that the celiac trunk is going to provide blood through its branches to my foregut structures. So coming off the celiac trunk, and we probably should remember this from class, I'm going to have three branches directly coming off my celiac trunk. I'm going to have my common hepatic. Okay, I'm going to have my splenic. Okay, and I'm also going to have my left gastric. So what I'm going to see, and let's do the splenic nerve, I'm sorry, splenic artery first, is that my splenic artery is going to travel posterior to the stomach. And remember that splenic artery has those little curves in it, right? So as it travels behind the stomach or posterior to the stomach, it does this little curvy curve thing. Then it's going to give off several branches, okay? A couple of those branches are going to be directed towards my pancreas. And these are going to be called the great pancreatic artery and the dorsal pancreatic artery. I'm also going to have short branches that are going to travel down towards the fundus of the stomach. And these are going to be my short gastric arteries. And there's going to be two of them, number one, number two. There can sometimes be more than two short gastric arteries. Typically, there's two. A lot of times, you're going to find more. The other branch that's going to come off it's going to be this longer branch that we're going to see eventually is going to have a nice big anastomosis here. And this is going to be my left gastroomental. So left gastroomental. So those are going to be the big branches that come off of the splenic artery. The splenic artery is then going to have several branches and here's what we're going to do. We're going to say to the spleen. So those are those branches that come off of the splenic artery. Now, off of my common hepatic artery, remember what the word common means. The word common means that it's going to split into two. So what I'm going to see is I'm going to see a big split that happens here, okay? My common hepatic artery is going to give off two branches. One's going to be called hepatic proper, okay? And the other one is going to be the gastroduodenal or gastroduodenal, depending on how you want to pronounce it. My hepatic proper 
is going to travel towards the hepatic structure, aka the liver, and it's going to give off a left hepatic branch and a right hepatic branch. The right hepatic branch is going to give off another branch that's going to travel towards my gallbladder, which is going to be called the cystic artery. So again, this is going to be going towards my liver. This is going to be going towards my gallbladder. So that's one portion of that common hepatic artery. Now the other portion is going to be this gastroduodenal artery or gastroduodenal artery. Gastroduodenal artery is going to give off some other branches. Okay, so what we're going to see here is that gastroduodenal is going to continue on, and it's going to give off a large branch that's going to anastomose with my left gastroemental, that's going to be my right gastroemental. I'm also going to see that this gastroduodenal artery is going to give off another branch that's going to travel towards the pancreas and towards the duodenum. And it's going to have two branches, an anterior branch and a posterior branch. And this is going to be that SPDA, okay? And remember that SPDA equals superior pancreatico duodenal artery, okay? That's exactly what SPDA is going to stand for. The other thing we're going to see is we're going to see that this gastroduodenal artery, and sometimes it comes off the common hepatic, sometimes it comes off the gastroduodenal. And this drawing, I'm going to draw it coming off the gastroduodenal. And this is going to be my right gastric artery. Okay, so everything in blue, that's going to be all my branches off the splenic artery. Everything in purple, that's going to be everything coming off my common hepatic artery. One more branch off the celiac trunk to go, and that's going to be the left gastric. Okay, so left gastric is pretty darn easy because left gastric is going to come around and it's going to anastomose with the right gastric. And remember, that's going to happen at the lesser curvature of the stomach. And the, less, the left gastric also is going to give off this little branch towards the esophagus which is going to be called the esophageal artery, okay? So that's a different way to draw it out. Like I said, it doesn't have all the organs in the picture. It just simply has the branches and simply has the arteries. I really am not terribly particular if you want to draw it out in this format versus have all the organs involved as well. That's totally your call, okay? So, but that's a different colored version of my celiac trunk. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. So remember that superior mesenteric artery, okay, we're gonna draw that guy out in green. Okay, so this is gonna be my SMA. That's going to come out right around L1. My IMA, we're going to draw down here, and we're going to draw them off-centered. Realize that they are centered. You guys can see them come off as unpaired arteries coming straight off the aorta. My IMA, that's going to come out about L3. Again, my SMA is going to come out about L1. Okay. Now remember what's going to come off my inferior mesenteric artery. Okay, remember I'm going to have branches that come off and those are going to form these arterial arcades and vasa recta that are going to start hitting my jejunum. 
and the ilium. Okay, it's going to continue on and it's going to have a branch and it's actually going to terminate down into what's called the appendicular artery, which will have an anterior and a posterior branch. On the other side of the SMA, I'm going to have branches coming off. Okay, and I'm going to have a middle colic. I'm going to have a right colic. And I'm going to have an iliocolic. Now, like we talked about in class, those are all going to feed into my middle colic, my right colic, my iliocolic. Those are all going to feed into this huge honking thing called my marginal artery. Remember that marginal artery is going to come around and it's going to follow the margin of my ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending colon. Okay, and that marginal artery, and we'll kind of draw that in here. Okay, and that's all the same artery. It's going to give off these tiny little branches that's going to start feeding the colon its blood supply. Okay, so when we think about the inferior mesenteric and the superior mesenteric, it's, it's really kind of the system of one artery draining into another larger artery, draining then into the colon. So hopefully you're kind of getting that from, from the schematic. So my middle colic, my right colic, my iliocolic, all those guys, those are all going to go right into that marginal artery. Okay, so they're not directly supplying blood to the colon, but they're supplying blood to the marginal artery, which will then supply blood to the colon. My inferior mesenteric artery, okay, remember that's going to get my hind gut. My superior mesenteric artery will get my mid gut. Inferior mesenteric artery is going to give off the left colic branch, which will have a ascending and a descending branch. Okay, we're going to continue on this great marginal artery because that's going to come all the way around and all the way down. Okay, so those ascending and descending branches are going to feed into the marginal artery. Left colic branch, and this is where the inferior mesenteric artery gets really, really super easy. It then gives off a series of sigmoidal arteries, okay, and these can vary in number, okay, so this is a sigmoidal, this is a sigmoidal, and this is a sigmoidal, okay, and those are all coming directly off of inferior mesenteric. Inferior mesenteric also will give off this branch that goes to the rectum, which is called the superior rectal artery. So big thing to realize here is realize that my marginal artery is getting blood flow from my superior mesenteric, okay? It's also getting blood flow from my inferior mesenteric. If one of those shuts down, aka superior mesenteric or aka inferior mesenteric, my colon can still get blood. Okay, my colon can still get blood through that marginal artery. Just realize though, okay, that if you don't have both sources of blood pumping blood into that marginal artery, now I need one of those arteries to work over time. It now needs to pump blood over a larger length. That will decrease the pressure, decrease the perfusion. Yes, it will still work, 
but it's not going to work nearly as well. Okay, so understand that. Understand that these anastomoses that we have are great. They're great for survival. They're not terribly optimal for function. Okay, so yes, I can stay alive with it, but I'm not going to be at 100%. So hopefully this was beneficial. Study, study, study. Um, that will definitely help learn this material. And best of luck.